Hello everyone and welcome to a brand new theory and speculation video. Today, I want to talk about Guizhong and why I think she may be from Chen Yu Vale. There were so many details hidden throughout Chen Yu Vale and its quests, so I want to talk about what led me to this idea. Now, this video does contain spoilers for the quest listed on screen now, so if you haven't done those, you have been warned. With all that said though, let's get right into the video. Before we get into the theory section of this video, I want to briefly go over what we know about Guizhong and her lore so far. Guizhong, also known as Agentis, was the god of dust. Long ago, she met Morax amid a field of glazelies, where she presented him with a stone dumbbell known as the Memory of Dust as a mark of their pledge. Even though there was no formal contract between them, the two became allies and ruled the Guili Assembly together. They were assisted by another god, Marchosius, and many adepti such as Cloud Retainer and Streetwood Rambler as well. As the assembly grew, Guizhong worked hard on studying mechanics. An adeptal abode known as the Realm of Clouds would be created to store some of the evil and ancient artifacts that Guizhong collected in her studies, including ruling machines from Conria. Guizhong would also meet with Rex Lapis and Cloud Retainer atop Mount Aosong to eat together and occasionally discuss mechanics. Eventually though, these good times would come to an end, and the Archon War would begin. Early on in the war, a fierce battle occurred in the Guili Plains, in which black dust choked the heavens and a thousand rocks splintered. After this battle, Guizhong would ask Morax to forget about the stone dumbbell, and she would die amidst the Glazelis. Soon after, a massive flood would sweep across Dihua Marsh and the Guili Plains, forcing the inhabitants of the area to move south of Mount Tianhong. After a 10-day trip and with the assistance of Marchosius and the Adepti, the people would arrive at what is today known as Liyue Harbor. Now, when we finally reach Chenyu Vale, we meet or hear about a total of three Adepti, those being Fujin, Lingguan, and the Herblord. Throughout the World Quest series Chenyu's Blessings of Sunken Jade, we learn about the history of these three Adepti, as well as an unnamed god who they used to call their master. Not much information is given about their former master, but we do know that she was female. Fujin also described her as kind, saying the Archon War was the true evil. During the Archon War, this god decided she would need to defeat Morax, either to become an Archon or to just survive. Knowing that she wasn't strong enough to take him down, she caused the Basui River to flood as a final attempt. The three Adepti knew that this would destroy Chen Yu Vale, so they defected against their master. Lingguan herded the people to shelter, Herblord fought against their former master, and Fujin climbed Mount Lingmeng, throwing the votive rain jade into the waters of the Bashui River. All of these efforts combined did save Chen Yu Vale, but it came at a cost. The Herblord was said to have perished in her battle against her former master. However, Lingguan and Fujin said that she has departed Chen Yu Vale and is now residing in Liyue Harbor. As such, she could very well be Changsheng. Anyways, Fujin would lose most of her power, which caused her to be trapped at Carp's Rest for thousands of years. Lingguan would return to the forest and the mountains, avoiding the humans who lived in the area. So, with all of this lore set down, let's dive into why I think Guizhong could very well be the former master of Chen Yu Vale. To start off, let's talk about the plan that the former master decided to go with, flooding the Bashui River. Interestingly, when Guizhong died, a flood also swept across the Guili Plains, forcing the people south. Of course, the river that runs alongside the Guili Plains is the very same Bashui River that runs through Chenyu Vale. The timeline of the floods would then line up, making this seem like more than just a coincidence. Now, I'd also like to bring up the lore of two weapons, those being Jadefall Splendor and the Primordial Jade Cutter. Jadefall Splendor talks about the history of the people of Chenyu Vale and how they once resided in the chasm. After the Divine Nail fell, however, they traveled north and eventually settled in Chenyu Vale. However, the lore also says that they once believed in a now-forgotten god, 
whose history is consigned to dust. As for the Primordial Jade Cutter, it was made by Morax for a certain someone, though this friend is now gone. Interestingly, the lore of this weapon says that this friend is long forgotten, and that the feelings between them have been reduced to dust on the wind. In both of these, the use of the word dust could connect back to the god of dust, Guizhong, and the term forgotten could be referencing the unnamed master of Chenyu Vale. Additionally, the primordial jade cutter is a sword, and if Guizhong was the certain someone it was intended as a gift for, it wouldn't be the only time she has been linked to using a sword. In Records of the Gallant, Dust, we learn about a maiden in a long indigo robe that walked along the shores of the Bashui River. People who saw this maiden said that there was a scent of glazed lilies in the air, which of course are flowers heavily tied with Guizhong. One night, a certain hunter encountered this maiden, and she saw her brandishing a sword against several perilous shadows. After the fight, the maiden was nowhere to be seen, and only a pile of bloody dust remained. Now then, I'd also like to talk about a peculiar area in Liyue known as Suiuzhe Slope. While in this area, the sky will turn dark and grey, and distant areas will appear unusually dark, almost like the air is full of dust. Additionally, the design of the entrance to the shrine within the area is unique in Liwa. At least, it was before Chenyu Vale came out, as similar styles can be found in this new area. Before the shrine is opened though, you can see a unique symbol on the store, a four-petaled flower within a hexagon. Of course, both the four-petaled flower and the hexagon are common motifs of Guizhong's design. Perhaps after Guizhong's lingering energy was sealed, it was placed in Suyuge Slope, acting as her final resting place. Ruin machines, which Guizhong had in her possession, can be found within the shrine as well, so some of her possessions may have been buried with her. One of these possessions may be the dull ring we can find within. The green gem embedded into the ring is Jade, which could have been from Chenyu Vale. Even though we have seen Guizhong in a cutscene, we didn't see her hands, so we can't confirm if the ring was hers or not. Speaking of this cutscene, it also shows Guizhong working in her workshop. I used to think that this was the Realm of Clouds, but after traveling through Chenyu Vale, I don't think so anymore. The design more closely resembles the medicine pots found around Lingshu Courtyard, and the background of the area also closely resembles depictions of Chenyu Vale. Additionally, the tree on Guizhong's desk is extremely similar to the one found in Lingshu Courtyard before the world quest Silently the Butterfly crosses the valley. The color of the dust that Guizhong is using also somewhat resembles the color of the tree after it has been restored during the mentioned quest. Still, with all of this said, why would Guizhong attack Morax? Well, for starters, the two never had a formal contract. They were just two people walking the same path for their own reasons. Guizhong was not an evil god, but the evil of the Archon War forced her to make a tough decision. So, either wanting to become an Archon or just wanting to survive, Guizhong decided to attack Morax. She knew she wasn't as strong as him though, so that's why she decided to flood the Bashui River first. When that plan didn't work out thanks to the efforts of the three Adepti, she decided she had no other choice but to face Morax head-on. However, we are told about Guizhong's death, and there is no mention of Guizhong and Morax fighting. Still though, the cutscene about Guizhong is told from the perspective of Cloud Retainer, and she arrived after Guizhong was already dead. As such, she wouldn't know exactly what happened during the battle. Only Morax, and perhaps the Yaksha's as well, witnessed the battle, though neither Zhang Li nor Zhao have said anything about Guizhong. Even when we repair the Guizhong Ballista with Zhang Li, he makes no mention of Guizhong herself. Perhaps Guizhong's betrayal is still a sore topic for him, and the lack of a contract between them may be why he is so fond of contracts today. Now, in the cutscene that shows Guizhong's death, we don't see any other gods around who could have been the enemy they faced. It could be possible that they retreated, but given all the evidence, I think it was Guizhong versus Morax. As I said earlier, during the battle in the Guili Plains, black dust choked the heavens and a thousand rocks splintered. 
This quote only mentions dust and rocks, which tie back to Guizhong and Morax respectively. The symbol shown on the seal created by the Yaksha also somewhat resembles the rain jades found in Chen Yu Vale, with two pieces on the side and a dot in the middle. This may be a bit of a stretch, but I still wanted to mention it. Still, this seal contains the lingering energy of Guizhong emitted after her death, which may have been sealed in Shuizhe Slope, hence the darkness. Now then, I want to talk about Guizhong's design, and how it links her to Chen Yu Vale and the Three Adepti. Looking at her hairpiece, it represents each of the three Adepti of Chen Yu Vale. The two intertwined hexagons represent a swirling snake, the Herb Lord, the fish represents a carp, Fujin, and the tassel represents a swanee, Lingguan. Of course, this isn't the only design choice that links Guizhong to Chen Yu Vale. Earlier, I mentioned how Guizhong would meet with Rex Lapis and Cloud Retainer on Mount Aosong. At their table here, each of them had their own assigned seat. Cloud Retainer's seat was in the southwest, facing her abode, Rex Lapis' seat was in the southeast, facing Liyue Harbor, and Guizhong's seat was in the north, facing Chen Yu Vale. Of course, I also have to mention Glazelies, and there are quite a few connections with these flowers. In modern times, these flowers are rare, with most of them being grown artificially. However, some do still grow in the wild. They can be found overlooking Liyue Harbor, at the foot of Mount Xuanlian, above Yaodi Valley, within Lingshu Courtyard, and in the cave where Bonanus killed Minogius. Yaodi Valley and Lingshu Courtyard are the only adeptal abodes where glazelies grow, which would make sense if Guizhong was their master. Additionally, in the Liyue Archon quests, we learn that glazelies can listen to people sing. If they can hear singing, why can't they hear everything else? Perhaps like Fujin or the Herb Lord, Guizhong is still alive, though her power is very weak at the moment. She may be able to listen to the world through the Glazelies, though she can't do much else. Maybe one day in the future we'll get a quest that involves us finding out where she is and restoring her power so she can live in an era after the Archon War. Getting back on track though, there is one more thing I need to mention about Glazelies. Back in the chasm, there is a place known as Glaze Peak. As I said earlier, the people of Chenyu Vale once resided in the chasm. As such, Glaze Peak could have been named after the flower their god loved the most, meaning Guizhong may have ruled in the chasm before moving up with her people to Chenyu Vale. I'd also like to mention the Cleansing Bell, a device created by Guizhong. The symbols on this bell, especially those at the bottom, resembles some of the designs found on architecture found in both Suizhe Slope and Chenyu Vale. Its description also says it has a life of its own, so perhaps this is where Guizhong went after losing most of her power. Finally, I'd like to quickly mention the World Quest Threefold Expectations. In this quest, we travel within the realm of the Teapot located in Chaoying Village. When you enter this realm, you will find that it highly resembles the Realm of Clouds, which could be another hint towards Guizhong's past in Chenyu Vale. Anyways, that's pretty much it for my thoughts on Guizhong, and why I think she is the unnamed god of Chenyu Vale. If you want to hear more of my thoughts on topics I mentioned in this video, I recommend my video on the Seven Wonders of Chenyu Vale, and my lore video that talks all about Guizhong. I would love to hear what ideas you have about Guizhong and Chen Yu Vale in the comments below as well. Anyways, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Sources and further readings are also in the description if you want to check them out. I hope you all have an amazing day, and I'll see you all in the next video.